something feels missing. I mean, like, I'm back here, but uh, something feels off. Well, hey there, guys. I'm Axel the Beast, and this is the Curiosity Shop, the ZeldaEngine.net video mailbag where I answer your Zelda questions. Our first question comes from Evilus, uh, who asks, Since last time there was a question about Wolf Link, I want to know what was your favorite of Link's alternate forms. Not sure if you answered this previously. Uh, and if you think there could be something like this in Zelda Wii U, I'm counting becoming a drawing, a bunny, the mask transformations, or even an adult as alternate forms. Oh, I don't know, like, I, I love the moments with the bunny in Link's Past, but I also, that's mostly just because I love the little soundtrack that came with it. I'm not going to do that that here. That's silly. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think, like, I'd have to go with the mask transformations in Majora's Mask, and I couldn't actually pick one in, well... I guess it's kind of a lie. The best one, honestly, was the Zora one because it gave you a lot of freedom of movement and control over, a, honestly, a different environment that you couldn't explore as thoroughly uh, with your other form in the game, or other forms, I guess. So it was basically the best form because it just allowed you to really explore the water areas in a way you couldn't before. Uh, but I also just like the look of Deku Link better. So I don't know, like between Deku Link and uh, Zora Link, I think those would be my pick. But I also really like the bunny in uh, Link's Past it just because of the moments surrounding it. But tell me your guys' is in the comments. It's a good uh, opinion one. Um, Evilist, again, I don't usually do this, but this time he also got like all of the sounds and whatnot right from the last mailbag, so you know, hey, props. I gotta give, I guess I'll answer a second one from this guy, and it's Link Between Worlds anyway, so what the, what the, what the heck. Well, he asks again, uh, what do you think about the new information about item implement implementation for Link Between Worlds? Renting items and using them in a dungeon to make it a lot less linear and giving people more options. I'm kind of worried that this will mess up my ability to 100% it. Yes, that's my biggest worry, getting everything in the game is very important to me. Isn't it for us all? Um, I don't think it's, like, I think it's an interesting system. It's honestly just another way of uh, bringing back the non-linearity from some of the earlier games and uh, introducing it, you know? It's a different way of doing it. It's kind of interesting. I mean, they've never done it this way before, so it could be a little interesting, the whole rental system. It sounds like intriguing gameplay. Uh, but, you know, it's it's cool to see the non-linearity come back. That's the main thing. I'm a little uh, disgruntled that it looks like some of the dungeons, if not all of them, are going to be blatantly labeled with signs that indicate what items you're supposed to use. And it just seems like such a... I don't know, it just takes you out of the experience. I'd like it if they just had some logic or, uh, you know, t other tells for what you would be using in each area, just to make the player think about it instead of just, oh, hey, here, use this item. This seems to defeat the point to me. I, I don't think it's going to hinder the 100 percenting at all, because uh, eventually later in the game you're supposed to be able to buy them for, like, I guess a bigger price. So you still can collect these items, just not right away. So I don't think it's going to be much of an issue. Elder X Child X6 asks, as we well know, there are three games that most of us Zelda fans would rather not talk about. Link to Faces of Evil, and Zelda the One of Gamelon, and Zelda's Adventure. With that being said, the reasons behind why a lot of us hate the game is because of their poor graphics and awkward controls, as a result of poor funding and not enough time to finish these games. My question is, even though Zelda the One of Gamelon and Zelda's Adventure in itself were insanely horrible, how would you feel if there was a, tr a release of a true Zelda game, where it was done in Zelda's point of view, and obviously done better than the CDI flops? You know, like... For a spin-off, it would absolutely be a great idea. I just don't like like the idea of the main series going in that direction, because I like how the main series primarily focuses on Link, first of all, and moreover, just that whole idea of the, the old fable, the hero saves the, the realm and or the princess from evil or whatever. Like, the Zelda games follow that archetype, and they do it in different ways, and that's great, but I don't know, I just feel like the main series should stay, stick with Link, even if it's a very different kind of Link, as I've discussed. Um... But, uh, you know, like, for spin-offs, exploring a lot of the other characters could be quite interesting. And, uh, you know, touching on Zelda, that could be kind of cool to see sometimes, sure. They should do, like, just a, just, uh, like a kingdom simulator. Just like SimCity, but Zelda, and you're Zelda. Because she's a gov she governs the and then run. Um, Magic Bunnyhead asks, if Ganondorf is a giant pig and Link is a wolf, then what is Zelda? Answer me now, or else Ben will find you. Okay, maybe that was a bluff. I'm pretty, pretty, pretty sure that was a bluff. Um, you know, honestly, Zelda's a bird. Because, you know, Skyward Sword, Goddess Hylia, birds and such. I don't know, I can see it. Link Donkey Kong asks, If they add voice action in the next Zelda game, do you think Zelda should have a British voice actor? Well, like, I think it's like a kind of like a cliche to use British uh, accents to indicate, like, distinguished or noble characters in some ways, or whatever. Or even educated characters. Um, but, uh, you know, like, yeah, honestly, they, if they're gonna use an accent for the characters, unless there's, like, a character who obviously comes from some different region where they have different 
you know, speech and such and such. Uh, I honestly think that they should just have the same ask, a accents for everyone. Uh, not just Zelda. I think that British wouldn't be a bad one to go with, but, uh, you know, not necessarily. Just, you know, it, just probably keep it relatively consistent would be the better course of action. Um, Twilight Princess 9123 asks, Why do you think other gamers hate or hate on the Zelda series or Nintendo in general? Well, obviously, I can't necessarily relate too much because I uh, I do like Zelda and Nintendo. <laughs> go, go figure. So I'm no, I'm no expert or anything. But honestly, I think, like, I've heard a lot of arguments about uh, the series just not being technically impressive, which seems like an odd argument to me considering that it kind of was prior to uh, Twilight Princess and Skyward Sword. But, um, you know, it's just not, like, a very, like, flat, like, advanced, realistic kind of thing. It's never had that look. Even Twilight Princess didn't really go all the way in that direction. Granted, Twilight Princess was the most was pretty popular for taking it in that direction, if not all the way. Um, so I think that's one part of it. I think the other part is simply that it's kind of an arcadey feeling game. I discussed this in an article recently, but there's like there's simulation games, and then there's games that feel like games. They feel arcadey. They feel like gameplay experiences. And for the most part, that is Zelda. I mean, it has story, it has world, but it's an arcadey experience. And I think uh, that is a turnoff to some people who like adventure games where it just feels more like you're really in the world. And to some point, there's some degree where that might actually be a valid criticism and Zelda could fix that. But uh, at the same time, that's part of Zelda's identity and uh, it's just, you know, different people have different tastes. Um, Otaku32, who again got everything right as well, um, asks, why does the Master Sword Scoured have tape on it in Ocarina of Time, but no other game? Well, the, the designs change from game to game, but aside from that, honestly, like, the scabbard of the Master Sword, I feel I feel like that's the least important part of the blade. I mean, like, they always talk about the Master Sword, not the Master Scabbard, it's, it's maybe the Servant Scabbard, but, you know, I just figure he just... Like, isn't this a debate that has, it's like the Optimus Prime thing, where, like, everyone wonders where his trailer goes when he turns into a robot? Where does Link's, where does the scabbard come from when Link gets the Masters? Um, Darunia asks, in the Wind Waker, does the Triforce vanish along with Hyrule? It's a very interesting thought, honestly. Like, there is no conclusive evidence either way on this thing. Um, I'd be willing to say not, because it's like a divine object, not a mortal kingdom. And it was the gods who, well, I guess it was the gods who drowned that mortal kingdom, but I don't think they get rid of the Triforce. I figure the Triforce is still around, but what happened to it, we don't really know. Maybe it'll show up again in the adult timeline. But, uh, you know, the idea of it drowning with Hyrule is interesting, and it certainly, it seems like uh, one of the main bearers, Gandorf, was lost. But he was never supposed to be the destined bearer. In fact, in like a lot of the old, uh, like old translations and stuff, that's supposed to be Impa. So Ganondorf just took the Triforce of Power, so it's not like he would, like they've broken a cycle or anything. All the main bearers are still around. Well, I guess Impa's not around, but who cares? <laughs> My whole argument's gone now. I, I think the Triforce would persist just because it's such a powerful object. We just haven't seen it yet, and uh, I don't know, that'd be an interesting story to cover for them in the uh, adult timeline. Uh, Linkachu72 asks, In Twilight Princess, there's a bird named Plum, who if you talk to uh, him as a wolf, We'll let you play a balloon popping game. Afterwards, whether you win or not, he asks if you want to play again. When he says say no, he says, ah, I forgot. And he flies away. What do you think he forgot? None can understand the mysterious things that the birds do. And when they forget about them, we don't find out about what they were going to do. All right, last question. Um, R2D93 asks, what if Demise's curse is actually Tingle? Explaining how Tingle can just randomly show up in all of the timelines and explaining why Tingle is so annoying and why he charges a lot of money and why there is a Tingle doll in Zelda's room in Skyward Sword present time, ah! Uh, whoa, man, just, just calm down. Um, no. But there is an oddly related sort of explanation. Not that I think that these uh, these the Tingle games are can canonical, or that uh, this was intended as some kind of canonical explanation for Tingle's his weirdness in general. Um, but in uh, freshly picked Tingle's Rosy Rupee Lands, the full title of the game, uh, I think for the DS. Uh, Tingle is not a name, but a title or a being that he's that he's made into by. Uncle Rupee, some entity or demon guy who just basically tingles rupees are made into his life. Like literally, if he runs out of rupees, he will die. And he must collect rupees to earn passage to Rupee Land or some such 
Uh, yeah, weird. Uh, so basically, uh, if you wanted to take that as canon, and I really don't think it is, it's, it's not included in the timeline, for example, the official Zelda timeline of all the canonical, you know, games, but, uh, if it were canonical, you could take that as an explanation that he's just mortal as long as he has, as he has rupees, and that's why he craves rupees and so on and so forth. But yeah, there you go. That's weird, huh? All right, guys, that's it for this time. Be sure to send your questions to the contact information in the description. In particular, let's focus on A Link Between Worlds uh, questions next week because there's been a lot of, uh, you know, news about that. So that'd be, that'd be kind of uh, fun to focus on, I think. And uh, I'll see you guys later. Tingle is not his name, but a title or a being that he's made into by, I think his name is Rupiji. I'm going to go look it up. One second.